Joining me now here on the MA Report is the president and founder of Lights Out Championship, Matt Friendo. Matt, man, as always, uh, appreciate time. Of course, you got the car comp here December the 14th in Grand Rapids. Uh, for the fans who are not in the Grand Rapids area, it will be on Fight TV, man. Uh, we're a week out from the event, man, so I'm guessing uh, it's just kind of that crazy uh, you know, next seven days or so for you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've been – it's the usual, man. We've had a couple of flight drops, had to replace them, and – it's always fun. It's always stressful, but um, it's all part of the game. So we're just rolling with the punches right now. You got a vacant middleweight title fight uh, top of this car. Cody Brundage taking on Eric Lozano. Uh, I, you know, every time I think of Eric Lozano, I think of the Corey Cuppy and everything that happened there. But now, you, how, how did this fight kind of come together? Well, you know, Eric's Eric's always down to fight. You know, he's he's a fighter at heart. So um, naturally, every card I have, he's he's ready to get on. And, you know, Cody, Cody Brunage has been uh, just on fire. You know, he's just been coming up through the ranks so quickly. Um, he took out a big opponent in his last fight, uh, went into his hometown, knocked off a top prospect. So, you know, he, he's, he's with Iridium now. He's, he's moving up in his career. He's making the necessary changes to try and get to the next level. And they thought um, this fight would be perfect for them. You know, Eric's a gamer. He's always been around. He's been around to fight anybody regardless of – if it's a young up and coming prospect or if it's a guy on the cusp of the UFC or even former UFC fighters, he's down to fight anybody. And Cody wants to prove that he's the same, you know, he's always down to fight. He wants tough fights. He wants, uh, you know, big fights. <clears throat> and I don't think it gets any bigger for him at the moment than um, fighting for the middleweight championship against a guy like Eric Lozano. Yeah. I know anyone who follows Cody, especially on his YouTube page with, with him and his wife kind of really, you know, go into what their life is in, in this martial arts journey. Uh, and, and when I had a chance to talk to Cody, I thought one of the major things that stuck out to me is like, you know, he walks to a fight and he's like, people are going to be concerned about his wrestling, but he, he really wants everyone to kind of respect his striking as a promoter. Is that something that really sticks out to you about Cody? Yeah, especially this young in his career, you know, you definitely don't want to be known as a one, one dimensional fighter. So, um, he's been, he's been working a ton on his stand up. Um, you know, and he's ready to let his hands fly. Um, he's, he's proven, I mean, yeah, I think he had like a six or seven second knockout or something like that. It was a really quick knockout. And then I think it was a second pro fight. So he's definitely shown that he can throw hands and obviously he's known as a wrestler. He was a collegiate wrestler. You know, he's got a strong, uh, ground game, but being three and all, especially getting that notion out of people's heads that, Oh, he's just going to go in and lay and pray, or he's going to go and take you down. Um, he's got one of the fastest knockouts in Michigan history. So, um, you know, that should, that should take away all of those, um, ideas that he's just a wrestler because he really does have some pretty powerful hands and he's going to let people see that. This card's also got uh, Kenny Cross taking on Jonas Flock. Uh, and Jonas is a guy that I've got a chance to, to know here and, and kind of see him perform. Uh, what, what's kind of had, you know, what, what about this matchup uh, intrigues you? So these are two guys that I, I really think are, are got to be close to getting a, a bigger call. Um, you know, Jonas Flock has been on a tear. I know he lost, uh, I, don't, I don't think it was his last fight. It was one of his previous fights at LFA, but before that, he hadn't lost in a really long time. Um, so he's one of those guys that I think um, in the same as Kenny is there may be one or two big wins away from getting like a contender series or a high profile Bellator or something like that, something more next level. Um, and Kenny's the same way, you know, Kenny's eight and three. He's got some really solid wins. He's marketable as ever. You know, he's a freak athlete. Um full of potential. I mean, this, this type of fight just really excites me. You've got two really high level guys in the Midwest region that are very close to being uh, able to get that next call. Um, and I think stylistically, it's really good too. You know, both of these guys early on, especially were known as more wrestlers, grapplers type, that type of fighter. Um, and both of those guys know that they can't be one dimensional, just kind of how we just touched on Cody Brundage, that you have to be a well-rounded fighter. So I know both guys have been putting a ton of work in on stand-ups, submissions, everything outside of what their strengths are. So I feel like both of these guys are really tough grapplers, and I think that that's going to kind of cancel each other out. So we're going to see who's been working harder and who has the, um, the better secondary game, and, and we're going to see who wins that fight. This card also features a pro debut of Calvin Harbaugh, who, who I had a chance to talk to previously, uh, taking on Mike Johnson. What, what have you seen with the development of Calvin, you know, heading into this fight? Yeah, so Calvin, um, he's he's taken out 
I mean, everybody, honestly, with ease that has been put in front of him, um, we had to uh, we had to start looking elsewhere for fights. You know, we brought in a, a really good fighter from Alabama this last fight as his last amateur fight. And I don't remember how quick it was, but he put him away pretty fast in the first round. Um, he's got a ton of hype behind him. He's got a ton of potential. He's a really super aggressive um I don't even want to call him a grappler, but he's he's just been taking guys down with ease, and then once he gets you down, he's just doing what he wants. He's so aggressive. Mm -hmm. He's so quick, especially, too. I mean, honestly, this kid could probably make 125, so he's a lot faster than a lot of guys at 135. Um, so he just in he's very unpredictable. You never know um, mentally what you're going to get with him, and I think that's kind of like the mystique that um, like a Tony Ferguson has is where they're almost a little bit – I don't even know what the right word is for it. Very unpredictable, I think, mm -hmm. is the best way to do it. But you just never know what you're going to get with him. You never know at the weigh-ins if he's just going to be calm, cool, and collected or if he's going to be in your face and, and kind of play a head game. You never know what you're going to get with him, and I think that adds a lot of the hype and the hate with Calvin. Calvin gets a lot of love. He gets a lot of hate from other fighters and fans and the things like that. People that don't know him don't understand it. So either way, you know, they always say good – or any, any publicity is good publicity – so he's always getting in the news somehow, whether he's getting under people's skins or whether he's, he's, you know, doing it for the way he fights. So either way, he's got a ton of hype behind him. And this is a tough fight too. You know, he, the, this guy he's fighting has seven pro fights and now he's coming in and facing a guy that's not very talented or just kind of fighting for money. Like he's fighting a guy that's been around for a long time. He's got way more experience than Kelvin and he's a tough fighter. So we're going to see if, if Kelvin was really ready for that pro, that pro jump. One of the things I, I saw that you put on, on social media here recently is about how you're, you're sponsoring uh, deserving families for a VIP experience at, at this event for the holidays. And you're also accepting unopened presents at this event. How, how did uh, ultimately this come together and, and why you and your wife and everybody at the team said, uh, let, you know, let's go ahead and do this. Yeah. So my wife actually brought it up to me. Um, and she, you know, she brought up the fact that, you know, there's toys for tots and there's other programs like that, but um, just to be able to help a couple of families like that, you know, I wish we had more money to be able to help a ton of families, but uh, just being realistic, we just set the bar at three families. Um, and we actually have a ton of people that have reached out that are willing to donate gifts or money to sponsor families as well. And honestly, I didn't put this out there yet, but Cody Brund has actually offered up his whole show money to go towards sponsoring a couple of families to go towards presents. So there's some really cool people and awesome people that have been helping out and getting behind it. So I'm just trying to assess where we're at. And we honestly will probably end up doing a couple more than three families. Um, but, you know, growing up for me, I was always really fortunate to have parents that um, either were in a good spot financially and can pretty much just get us presents. Or even if they didn't, they always found a way to, to help us and get us presents. Uh, but I understand that, like, not everybody is, it, it has the same luck and is just fortunate. You know, everybody struggles sometimes. And, um you know, Christmas for me at this age, obviously, I understand what it is. It's it's a little bit different for me once you get a little older. But mm -hmm. when I was a kid, I looked forward to waking up at 5 a.m. and waking my parents up and going and getting presents, you know. So um, I had seen a couple of videos on Facebook of um, some sing some single parents and even just a couple of parents that just are struggling to make ends meet talk about not really being able to provide for their kids for Christmas and like that type of stuff like hits my heart. So, um, you know, just to be able to help them out, we're going to, like I said, we're going to see after the show where we sit and if we can do more than three, awesome. Um, but we're going to take these families, take them shopping, um, get them some, get them a nice meal, get them some kids uh, or some presents for their kids, get them some clothes, whatever they need. We're not going to like put a restriction on what they use the money on, but we are going to go and take them out and get them what they need and hopefully be able to um, provide a good Christmas experience for some families. If there's anybody in the Grand Rapids area that they want to help out with this, would it be just, you know, connect with the promotion via social media? Yeah, um, that would be, that's what we've been having to do is, is having people reach out to the lights out page. Um, you know, if they can bring an unwrapped um, present to the show, we'll make sure it gets into the right family's hands. Um, either way, whatever is whatever is possible, reach out to me, reach out to the Lights Out page. Um, you know, however we got to do it, uh, we want to help as many people as possible. So I definitely don't want people to feel obligated. There's no you don't have to donate if you come to the show. You don't have to bring a toy like it's business as usual. We're putting on a really high level MMA event. 
But if they do have some extra money or they have an unwrapped gift that they're willing to donate, we would love to make uh, some kids happy on Christmas. You know, as you start to uh, you know look past this event and in 2020, uh, what's kind of what's the outlook for Lights Out in, in 2020? Yeah, so we're getting ready to finalize our schedule for next year. Um, we do have the first show booked. It's going to be February 8th of 2020. Uh, I think shortly after the new year, we'll be able to have our full schedule. Um, we're planning on at least five shows. Um, I have a, uh, my son is due actually, my first child is due in March. So it's been kind of putting a little wrench into the plans of how we schedule the shows. So I haven't really been able to schedule my second and third shows until I see exactly when he comes, he could come early or late or so it's, it's, uh, it's got that on a little bit of a delay, but I should know, like I said, hopefully here soon, we'll be able to finalize, I'll at least be able to have the later dates scheduled. So, but we're also, we're looking to expand a little bit, you know, obviously doing shows in Grand Rapids has been awesome. That's where our home is. And, and I don't really ever foresee us leaving doing shows there, but we do kind of want to expand maybe throughout Michigan and a couple other states. So we're going to just kind of test the waters and see, we're looking at maybe the Detroit area or something like that to do a show. Um, and then, you know, we'll see about leaving the state after we have some really good sponsors and, and things like that, that help us to be able to do stuff like that. So, um, it's exciting though. It's, it's exciting to see we're still growing and we're still getting bigger, but we've really only been a part of this company for a year. Um, and, and we're already getting to that point where we can start to justify maybe going somewhere else. So it's exciting, but for now, um, we're going to, we're going to set the schedule for the next year and then we'll see what happens. Of course, up first, it is lights out six here on December the 14th in Grand Rapids, Michigan, of course, streams on fight TV, Matt, as always, man, I appreciate the time. Of course, I would know, uh, they can find out more about lights out, uh, and anything else you want to, uh, promote, man. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, main thing is, is Facebook right now, just lights out championship. Um, we do have a Twitter, Instagram, it's just lights out fights, um, it, on both of those handles where we do have a website right now. We're still finalizing a few things. So we'll have that here shortly, but Facebook's definitely our main, um, source of promotion. So check us out at lights out championship and, uh, we'll keep you guys updated with what's going on.